Welcome, I'm Stephanie Grepling with Manatee Educational Television. We are at the 2023 Bradenton Blues Festival on the gorgeous Bradenton Riverwalk. We're so excited to talk to all of the artists and musicians. We have a great lineup of artists to show you today. So stay with us as we talk to all the people that make this event happen, share their music with you, and rock on the river. I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend. Paul, you are the brains of this blues festival and musical talent director acquisition extraordinaire, if you will. I won't go that far, but uh, I enjoy being here. Yeah, absolutely. And we're listening to Lori Bell right behind us, which is amazing. Yeah, he has his brother Stephen Bell on there, and they're, they're, they're you know, the second generation from their dad, who's a Blues Hall of Famer, Kerry Bell. Yeah, so tell me about how you get talent like this right here in the heart of Bradenton. Well, I've been doing this for a lot of years. I started uh, bringing blues into Maine, where I live, in uh, 1978. So I've been doing this a long time. I've been doing festivals for 35 years. And so it's, uh, I know most of these artists. I've been, they've played for me at other festivals that I do. And uh, so it's just been a continuing looking how you try to mix. Like we had some of the bands like the Shaylin band that opened today yeah. is an up and coming band. So you kind of bring in some of the new ones. Memphis Lightning's the same thing moving up and uh, these next, you know. The with, OGs. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, so the next, <laughs> you know, the next three bands on here are all legendary bands. And, yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, you kind of give a mixture of uh, putting different styles together because you, you might be a harmonica fan but i might be a guitar fan yeah so i bring a guitar player i make sure i have a harmonica player someone else might like the female so i make sure there's plenty of females on here so you kind of mix it up and look to put the show together and then of course it comes down to they give me a budget <laughs> so i gotta make it all work within the budget sure which is good. sure well you put together an awesome lineup for us today and what an amazing opportunity for the local artists to showcase their talent right here in bradenton well bradenton's uh this festival has become uh you know it's, it's known uh you know nationwide now it's uh it's, you know it's had a, a great reputation and uh, you know being right here on the river walk uh yeah. which was how it started uh way back in uh, you know I guess 13 years ago when uh, I got a call from uh, Johnette Aishin, who we just de did a dedication yeah. to, uh, asking me to, if I could willing to come out to Florida. Uh, then Jack Sullivan was here with Blues Music Magazine, had moved into the Village of the Arts. And so they asked me to come out because uh, Jack was Jack had been coming to some of my other events. So he hooked up uh, me with, with Johnette, and then we walked the river walk, and uh, we said this is the only spot. liable spot that would really yeah. work to do a festival. So... Uh, we kind of uh, decided uh, what we were going to do, and uh, it was kind of funny uh, because of the when I first came out, I said, "All right, we can put a stage here. Uh, this, this, we can put the vendors around here. We need, you know, 50 amp power on both sides yeah. to have plenty of power. So that'll all be done." They said. So I went back to Maine, came out, I, I booked a festival for them, we got it all booked, and then came back and realized that. Now there's a splash pad in the playground <laughs> where the stage is going to be. Oh, and, so you flip and, her around. And and then there was no power because they, they budget-wise, they just had to do some different changes. So so we had to reconfigure everything two days before the festival. That's never and, fun. And uh, <laughs> putting the stage similar to pretty close to where it is now and, and just making some changes, So which, which we did. you got to be able to move on the fly. But uh, it's worked uh, really well. The reputation has grown each year. And... Uh, the talent, uh, you know, uh, keeps keeps getting better. And let's touch on that reputation a little bit. When you reach out to artists, are they like, "Yes, I want to play for the Bradenton Blues Festival," or they is it relatively unknown to them? Well, um, I guess I, I don't know how I say this without being on a bragging aspect. Uh, I just want to play my festivals. Yeah. And so, uh, 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 just because they put faith in in your well, talent. I, I run a very strict festival. We run on time. Uh, the bands are on and off the stage on time, and that's important to the artist and as, as well as to the fans. Yeah. And I always mention that when we yeah. announce the lineup, everybody said, well, who's headlining? There's six headliners here today. Someone <laughs> has to open the show. Someone has to close the show. Sure. And so whoever you 
bought a ticket to come see is your headliner. Yeah. So you might have to see Laurie Bells. This one might have said, I'm coming to see Rick Estrin. Sure. So that's their headliner. So they're all headliners. They're all national touring bands. So someone has to open, somebody has to close. So uh, that's how I've always worked the festival. And uh, it, and so artists enjoy working for that, you know, that part of it. And then, and of course, over the last, say, five or six years, Brighton is being put on other artists you know, because it's December. Yeah. They want to get out of the north. Yeah, who doesn't want to be in 82 degree, degree weather on the Brighton, Bradenton Riverwalk right now? And, and the other thing that we do for the artists is we don't, uh, a lot of festivals have a 50 or 100 mile radius that they cannot play within that radius because, the, you know, they want, they're paying the big money for the big artists. Sure. And we, uh, Bradenton since day one, we have not stopped them. We had these artists are playing all over, you know, Cottonmouth had a couple of them, uh, and they're playing all over the place in the area. So they can come down here and get a five or six, seven day tour, which makes it beneficial to them. Yeah. And so that works well in their favor as well. I understand that this festival sells out so quickly. That just speaks volumes to the talent that is booked. Um, and the people that I've spoke to today, they're coming back year after year, almost like season ticket holders because they know that this is going to be such a great festival and the talent is going to be great. Uh, that's, you know, that that's true. I mean, they, uh, you know, people do know that this, you know, we only have to put so many people in here. So, you know, don't wait to buy a ticket. Yeah. You know, the first, first year we had tickets at the gate available. Year two through now, there has been no tickets at the gate. <laughs> this year we had some at the gate because people started to get back out because the two years we had to go to the ballpark. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was it, it was more of a concert than a festival. Yeah. I mean, it was different a great, vibe. Certainly a, a different vibe. And it was great that the ballpark, you know, accommodated us because, you know, during COVID, you know, we were able to put a thousand people in a 7,500 foot stadium. So Another they could all separate. Another great venue in Bradenton, and, and not so, too far from and, here. And but. So, it, so it worked really well, but we did two years there, but we went back where we belong on the, on the river walk. That's right. And there's just something, you know, wonderful about bringing the community together. This is the 11th, from what I understand, with the two-year break with COVID. We didn't take a break, so we actually this is actually the 12th year. 12th but, year. But because uh, we actually did the two during COVID, we never stopped. We did we did 2020 and 2021. So and we're back, baby, better than ever at the 2023 Bradenton Blues Festival. Thank you, Paul, so much for organizing such a wonderful event and bringing such culture and entertainment to our community. Well, my pleasure, and thank you guys for being here, interviewing all the artists and uh, making that work as well. Absolutely. We're all the team. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm here with Tim Yeager. It's so nice to meet you. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I'm I'm holding this gorgeous poster here, and you're the artist behind the 2023 Bradenton poster. I am, and it's great to be here on such a lovely day with so many people. Uh, it's a wonderful outpouring, and uh, it's great to see so many people come out and enjoy the blues and all the food and. Bradenton. Yeah, and you've been in Bradenton, Sarasota area for many years That's now. That's right. I moved here in 1998. I've lived in Sarasota ever since then. And uh, I work for Ringling College of Art and Design, and I've been a local artist creating artwork like this and many other things uh, ever since. Very cool. Very cool. So how did you get chosen to be the, the poster child, if you will, uh, of, of the event? It was kind of random, actually. I received an email from Real Life Bradington. Uh, about three years ago, I did one of the uh, postcard pieces uh, that's a, a permanent piece that's in Village of the Arts of Herbie Rose. Went really, really well. And then uh, about about a year ago, I received an email from Real Life Bradington asking me if I would uh, do this. That's so awesome. And I'm seeing your images all over T-shirts. And I picked up a poster, excited to hang this up in my house. And um, that's got to be, you know, really cool for you to, to have your art be, it's, tr be treasured, right? It's just great. It's great to, to have so many people, again, come out, signing some autographs, uh, you know, putting these in frames, something that, that they cherish. It's been neat to see how many people uh, 
collect these from yeah. year to year. Uh, I've met a lot of people who have hot commodity. Almost all of them mm -hmm. from the I believe 12 years that this has been going on. Yeah. You, you know, a lot of people that I talk to, they're like season ticket holders almost for this festival. They they don't miss it. No, they look forward they don't. to it. And how can you? It's great music. You can't beat this kind of atmosphere. Uh, especially in the beginning of December. Right? Doesn't check get much better than this. Check out our background music. Oh, uh, yeah. Doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> absolutely. You're absolutely right. <laughs> absolutely. Well, very cool. We appreciate you being a part of this community and sharing your art and your talent. Um, last but not least, I saw some other amazing art that you're showcasing. Yeah, I've, you know, I've been painting a lot of coastal scenes for a number of years now. And uh, I fly drones over our beaches and then I take that into my studio and make a uh, large-scale acrylic paintings from that. They're beautiful, very eye-catching, just like this poster. And now tell me a little bit about the hands and what inspired you. So uh, I did a lot of research into this. Uh, I started by looking up posters from the 50s, posters from the 60s, a lot of blues, a lot of psychedelic posters, and I really wanted to create a hybrid of all of that, of something that is that and then here and now. Yeah. So. It starts with the sunrise. Uh, we have the sun in the in the front, and the waves in the back. Of course, the 2023. The hands right here are a tribute to uh, M. C. Escher, who is a, a mathematical One of artist. One my favorites. Yep, there's the hands drawing the hands. Yeah. We have the wings of glory, and then we have the sun coming down over here. Two seahorses, which is a nod to the Lido Beach Casino uh, out on Lido Beach in Sarasota. And then right here we have the stage, which is just behind us of Rossi Park. So a little bit of everything I and uh, definitely uh, the blues poster. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I certainly will be cherishing this for years to come. You're not going to want to miss next year's Bradenton Blues Festival. Pick up a t-shirt, pick up a poster. Come have a good time, listen to great music and meet great artists right here in our community. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate it. With Marsha and Mark from the Villages Blues Society. Society. Yep. Guys, tell me a little bit about your organization and what brings you to downtown Bradenton today. We have been to this festival all but one year since they started it. Uh, my family has had a condo in Bradenton for 50 years now <laughs> and so we know Bradenton really well and when they started this festival Marsha and I have been chasing the blues all over the United States for 20, 25 years and so when they came to to Bradenton, we had to support it. Of course, you know? yeah. So it's 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 a fantastic, one of the best festivals run in the country. It really is. They do a great That's job. That's awesome. Here. So you guys are in the villages. Yeah. What do you do out in the villages? What do we do? <laughs> we have international traveling, um, award-winning blues acts twice a month, and um, we also have a house band that marks the drummer in. And we play at different places around restaurants and bars, and um, we have driveway parties. Some we're just a, we're just a really close, loving community. We really are. That's excellent. For example, we have about 50 people here. You'll see all these green shirts all okay. over the crowd. We took a bus over with about 45 so people, fun. I think, in the bus. But even at that, there are lots more that just came Partying on their own. Partying and rocking so, all the way yeah, to Bradenton. You bet. You bet. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So are you looking to bring other bands to the villages to play? Tell me well, about... Marsha does all the booking, and we've been doing this now for seven years. So uh, we've gotten to a point now where a lot of times they contact us instead of us trying to chase Ooh, them down. inbound marketing, I love it. Yeah, but but we're here. A lot of the reason we go to a lot of festivals is to try to find new talent. Um, and, well, we did our first, inter our second International Blues Challenge this year. The first time we did it, we just basically took any band that wanted to sign mm -hmm. up because we didn't know anybody. Well, this year, we took a, uh, we, we, we went out and found the bands ourselves, and our competition was amazing. We had six bands that competed in the Shaylin band that just performed. They won our blues challenge and they're going to go to Memphis in January to the International Blues Challenge where there will be 
around 200 bands that they'll compete against. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a really amazing opportunity for the band. If, and is if the they Blue win. Society headed there in the party bus? Oh no, not in the party <laughs> bus. But we're gonna take over a hotel over there though, for sure. Oh yeah, keep it rocking and rolling. <laughs> you bet, you bet. So. You know, blues, it ranges, you know, bluegrass to rock blues. Where do you guys kind of fall in that range? Well, we, as Mark said, I book the bands, but we discuss and make decisions and our board of directors also gives us some opinions. But what we try to do, because as you said, there are so many sub genres of the blues that we honestly try to get the soul, the R&B, the rock and blues, the younger people that are keeping the blues alive, that's a huge, huge thing that we believe in, generations keeping the blues alive. And we try to shake it up, so to speak. You know, we, we get the R&B, we get the, you know, we, we get the more soulful, we get, we have a listening room. We've got Tinsley Ellis coming up in January. He's going to be doing a listening room, which means it's much more close and personal, a smaller group, more intimate. Um, so we, we try to change it all up. Tell me a little bit about the events specifically you have go coming up because we're already in December and then you mentioned one in January and then Memphis. Well, we have uh, a band from out of actually from France that's going to be here next week, uh, actually on the 9th of December uh, called the Sonelli Brothers. Uh, they, I guess now they're out of England. They were out of France. I guess they've moved to England. But anyway, they're over here from overseas and they're going to play for us on the 9th. But they came in second place of the International Blues Challenge last year. And that's the band that actually beat the band that we took last year, which is, was the Trey Wanving band. And we were so impressed with them. We really thought they were going to win the whole thing. But then another friend of ours ended up winning One the whole thing. Them. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Matthias Latin uh, won the whole thing. So we're going to have the Sonelli brothers December 9th and December 28th. We have we have Matthias Latin playing. So the first and second place for the for the blues uh, for the international blues challenge last year is going to come and play Where for us. Where could I find the whole listing of events coming up and more information on the Villages Blues Society? The VillagesBlues.com. Excellent. And it's all posted right there on our website. Well, yeah. there you have it. Check out the Villages Blues Society. I'm here with Mayor Gene Brown. Mayor, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, and it's exciting to be here, and especially last night's crowd and today's crowd is unbelievable. You picked a really good weather day. Yeah, to the throw weather, a, an amazing event. Right, definitely. Uh, obviously, a little cooler in the week, but yeah. the day is just beautiful, breezy, nice to hear the music, and working great. Gorgeous sunny day out on the Riverwalk, and what a tremendous event to showcase this beautiful Riverwalk. And if you've never been to the Riverwalk in downtown Bradenton, it is such a special, amazing, beautiful um, attraction. Attraction. It's our award-winning Riverwalk, as you know, and it's yeah. been on going on over 10 years now that the river walk since it was started. And now that we've upgraded our Rossi Park to field turf, yeah. so the events can work a lot nicer. And it's just unbelievable the way people are attracted to it. Certainly we have hundreds, if not thousands of people behind us mm -hmm. uh, enjoying the music and just what a special time of year. The holidays bringing people together, music cheering people, you know, dancing, just a really lively, great family event. Well, Realize Bradenton does a great job working with the city. And, you know, they're in their 11th year. The uh, Blues is in its yeah. 11th year. And the way things have gone, you know, we had during COVID, we had to get off the Riverwalk because of the crowds, yep. the way they were. But being back here now the we're last back, couple of years, baby. we're back to we're that. We're back and, with the Blues. And 100% back. And, <laughs> and last night's crowd was the biggest it's been ever. Really? And today it's growing. Well, certainly. I don't see an end in sight, and I see it growing year after year, 11 years going strong now, right. attracting some amazing talent. Well, that's what people, you know, we, the good thing about the city, whether it's our public market, whether it's our Braden and Live events that we have during the year, we're really trying to come up with ways to grow that, and it's all different um, groups. Yeah. You know, this is a blues group. The other ones are the different groups that come in downtown, yeah. but it's family friendly, everything you can do. 
Tell me a little bit about what's going on with the city in 2024. Um, some other events maybe possibly coming up? Well, obviously coming into uh, New Year's Eve. Yeah. Going to have to get downtown, down, Brayden Live fireworks. with fireworks. Second year in a row. Yes. We know a lot of people have eliminated the their fireworks. No, these fireworks will be off the county building oh. over the main street. And oh, it's wow. the same fireworks they do at Super Bowls, so there's no flame. It's all paper-based, and we're excited about that being the second year of that. Amazing. Okay. Well, you've done it again. Mayor, you brought an amazing crowd to this beautiful city on the Riverwalk, the 11th Bradenton Blues Festival. We're here with Chief Bevan behind the scenes. Chief, what an amazing blues event. This is the 11th year. There must be a tremendous amount of logistics and organization taking place to make sure that all the citizens are safe and uh, traffic is uh, detoured and things like that. Can you tell me a little bit about what goes into organizing this? You know, you would think that it does take an inordinate amount of train uh, planning, but the fact that we've done it so successfully year after yeah. year after year, We've almost got kind of a blueprint for That's it. That's great. Uh, you know, this year, I think the only difference is we've got even better bands than we ever have. Uh, it's a sold out crowd and it's sold out early. You can see behind me, it's already packed and it's it's only one o'clock in the afternoon, yeah. but this is one of our highlight bands. You know, as always, we have concerns about traffic, uh, but that's been buttoned down. We've got some great vendors out here, and yeah. and this is a crowd. They're not looking. They're not looking to rumble, right? They're just no. looking to dance. Yes, and, and enjoy rocking the on day. the river is what they want to do today. Absolutely. You know, the weather is cooperating. It could be a little cooler, but we have a nice breeze coming in. Yeah. So I'm not sure we can have a, a better venue or a better event. That's right. Right. And, you know, it was a breeze for me to, to get here. I found parking very quickly. You know, traffic was flowing right there on Manatee Ave. So great job to you and your team. Well, awesome. Thank you. You know, my only regret with this is that we can't make it big bigger because we're just kind of confined by the river sure. and buildings because I think the bigger we made it, the more people that would come. But these guys are certainly in for a treat today. Yeah. Well, we're going to enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you so much for making our city safe and a wonderful place to live and entertain. All right, well, thank you very much. I'm here with Andrea Knees at, from Realize Bradenton. It's so wonderful to have you here talking to us today. Tell me a little bit about how Realize Bradenton and the Bradenton Blues Festival are connected. Great. So Realize Bradenton is a nonprofit that is focused on bringing people together. That's what we do. We're bringing people together, but we also want to showcase Bradenton. And so the Blues Fest, it brings people together in the community, but it also brings people from outside of the community to our incredible river walk and our, like, they get to see how amazing Bradenton is as well. I talked to a group earlier. They had actually rented a bus and packed it out and they all have matching t-shirts. And so that's so fun to really ha have other people from different communities that know about Bradenton and want to come to Bradenton for the events that yes. are being put on. It has put our name on the map throughout the state for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And what a beautiful day, beautiful river walk. Um, we really kind of lucked out here and the amazing talent. Tell me a little bit about the talent lineup that we have. You know, and we have been, we started the festival in 2012. 2012 was our first year. And so, the talent has really grown since then. You know, we started with more local bands and as word got out of how great this, you know, it's December, Just we're here. Leveling up <laughs> year after year. And so word gets out and now more and more performers really want to come here to perform. And so, we're getting people who are coming just for specific bands as yeah. well. And the other thing I think is great is even though we're doing that, we we also leave a spot for somebody local. Because yeah. having local musicians is still, even though people want to come from everywhere, local musicians are really important. Literally giving them a platform to perform for their community and getting, you know, um, uh, to put themselves out there and their talents out there. So glad to be out here with you at the Bradenton Blues Festival. You are one of the title sponsors um, of this festival. Why was it important for you to get involved and be a sponsor of this event? 
Well, I think there's a combination. Realize Bradenton is so important to our downtown and our community to bring these events kind of events down here and so this is one of those premier events that you see the number of people that come down it's really not a huge factor to get people to go somewhere and do this they get to sit and enjoy music all day um but a better venue to do it than the riverwalk and so we're just happy to be part of it absolutely loving your strong and as i understand you built this facility right here on the riverwalk a beautiful um area yeah it's wonderful um we we were fortunate enough to be selected by the city to build this one we built the second phase which now we have a, a mile and a half of of river walk along the waterfront and every downtown that prospers has this kind of feature in its in its downtown core and we're so happy to have been a small part of that it definitely brings a lot of culture and a sense of community um the river walk to, to downtown bradington yeah well we have the performing arts center with the art center that's getting ready to be built now which we're building also um, which we're excited about but this has sort of become the cultural with the museum the bishop uh, it, it's sort of the cultural within the city internal that allows us to bring more people down, more restaurants, more venues for people to walk. The walkability of this town is phenomenal. A live, work, play, if you will, really, in downtown Bradenton. Absolutely. And we want to continue that. We have a number of projects coming forward that I think will enhance that and, and, and do things even greater. But it's still this kind of event that is every year is just a, a, a embedded into our community now. Yeah, 11 years strong. I've talked to a lot of people at this event and they keep coming year after year after year. And it's a sold out event and it's an intimate event really because, you know, we're a little bit limited because of the, the riverfront behind us. But I'm I'm positive that, that it would continue to grow exponentially if, we, if there was more room. Sure, and you know, uh, the hotels are full. In fact, I just saw a group from the villages. They sent like yeah. 75 people the here. The Blue Society. Yeah, the Blue Society in their yellow or green shirts. And it's just, it's that kind of stuff. As we continue to grow, we become an identity here that people want to come to downtown Bradenton, which from 30 years ago when I started here, this is what we always wanted and expected the city of Bradenton to be able to accomplish. And now we're starting to see some of those fruits from people like the Realize Bradenton group. Well, those seeds were planted many years ago, as you've said, and it's continuing to grow the downtown Bradenton area. And we're so grateful for you investing in and building our, out our community so that everybody can enjoy, you know, facilities and um, events like this. Sure. No, absolutely. And we want, you know, I have five kids and 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 four yet to be five grandkids coming into one coming in December. And this is where I want them to call home long term. And it's these kind of things that really bring those those kids back which is so important to a community safe and family friendly that's for sure thanks ron so much and for ndc all that you do thank you I'm rocking out with Paul and Rick here at the Bradenton Blues Fest. Now this is your 10th time coming here. 10 times, yep. And why do you keep coming back to this festival? Take a look around, listen to what's going on. Look at the people. Half of these people here are my friends, I think. This is not your first rodeo. I can tell you're a blues fan by your shirt. That's why I picked you out of the crowd here. Oh, cool, yeah, Nashville, yeah. last summer. I'm part of it. <laughs> Nashville rocks. And you have uh, the Bonita Springs Blues Festival shirt on, so you're a, you're a blues lover as well. This is not your first rodeo either. Oh, no. We, we probably go to a dozen festivals a year. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's great. So uh, did you come to this particular festival to hear a certain artist, or you just wanted to hear what the lineup was this year? Uh, we support it every year. We've been coming from the beginning. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And yeah. you traveled from up north, up Tampa. Uh, yes, 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 that same area, yeah. Well, they couldn't have picked a more beautiful day to have this blues festival right here on the Bradenton River Walk. Now, you said something about P. Diddy. P. Daddy. P. Daddy. Tell me, tell me about P. Daddy. WMNF 88.5. I do the show with Reverend Billy Wirtz and okay. Marvelous Marvin. Okay, and what is the show about? M music from post-World War II up through the 70s, gospel, Country, R&B, blues, roots. I love it. Well, you heard it here with P. Daddy. 
the Brendan Blues Festival. Thanks guys for coming. You came all the way up from Cape Coral. Is this your first time to this event? Yes, it is. And how did you hear about it? Uh, it was on Facebook. I saw a thing and I said, oh, that'd be interesting. Yeah. So here how, we are. How long ago did you get your tickets? Because they sold out. It's been quite a while. I um, geez, I would say it's been about two or three months. Oh, yeah. Yeah, as soon as he said something, I got right on the internet and bought the tickets. Yeah, that's great. So what do you think? Have you ever been to the Bradington Riverwalk before? No, no, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous up here. We love it. Yeah. We're so definitely much, coming back. So much to do, you know, yeah. a, a mile and a half of Riverwalk, and then you can go to the restaurants right downtown. Our hotel is right there. Perfect. That's great that you even chose to stay here. You know, if yeah. you want to party and dance a little bit, you know, you, uh, sorry, um, <laughs> you're, you're, you're being safe. You're not driving, you know. And you get to take in a little bit more of the culture in, in Bradington that way, rather than just zipping right home. Absolutely. Well, it looks like a beautiful little town. Yeah, it certainly is. It certainly is. Well, we appreciate you coming to Bradenton and sharing your love for music and the blues. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm with Beth and Christina. Beautiful, I love the hats we're sporting today. So what brought you here to uh, the Blues Festival? Well, we live here in Bradenton and we are big supporters for 11 years now. We come every year and love it. Yeah. So we're thankful that we have this here in Bradenton. Absolutely, it's such a wonderful event to have right here on the river. Bring the community together, right? Yes, and a beautiful day to celebrate and have fun and listen to great music. That's right, that's right. So do you ever find new artists from these events that you go on to listen to or go, go to, not on tour with them, but go see them out? Yes, we're avid blues fans and um, we do go as a group and we sort of follow certain folks around and we have been introduced to a few people here from the concerts, yes. Well, certainly there's a great lineup today. Um, I think we're going strong till 6.30 tonight, so we're gonna keep rocking for a couple more hours. So, <laughs> that's right. I'm here with Scott and Christina. Tell me why you are here today at this Bradenton Blues Festival. I'd be breaking a 12 year streak if I wasn't here today. And uh, we come, we love it. We get to see the likes of METV and Charles Clab Saddle, <laughs> all of the important celebrities here in town and uh, you know the fantastic music. That's really why we're here. Is there a specific band that you're looking forward or have heard already today? Well, when I started Rick Estine into the business, <laughs> <laughs> now we're actually here to see everybody because they're all fantastic. They're incredibly well vetted. They all come from great places with fantastic music. And, um, and we like to go see them in other places as well. Yep. But, but this is our blues fest. It's the best blues fest. In our hometown, right? Hometown. We love weather. Supporting. We have we the supporting. river. We've got beautiful ladies. <laughs> and we love supporting our community. And we do. We love supporting our town, without a doubt. Well, thanks for coming back year after year and supporting this beautiful event. And just a sense of community and celebrating music, bringing everybody together. We are. We are bringing everybody here, and everybody's getting down and having a good time. And, uh... We're about to commence that immediately. <laughs> Keep on rocking, guys. Okay. Have a great day. <laughs> out. Uh, we had been doing some work with uh, an amazing international artist, uh, Kat Riggins. Um, he reached out and we gladly accepted the invitation. <laughs> and uh, we're here and we're going to make the best of the opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we have six members, six members of our band. And um, the way we do our music is actually majority original. But we do like to throw in a couple of cover songs that the crowd can join in and relate to and really sing along with. Um, our style is very soulful, 
uh, we like to take influence from Aretha Franklin and Joyce Kennedy with Mother's Finest, uh, Larkin Poe, different uh, groups of that nature. That's obviously my look. It's a little bit Larkin. <laughs> So, yeah, we, we have influences from uh, many different places, but we do like to try and keep as much originality as we can. We actually have uh, two albums that are out, uh, one released on last year and one released October 18th of this year. So you'll be hearing uh, quite a lot of music from both of those albums. They can find us on any one of the major music uh, outlets online. Also, if you go to our website, shaylinband.com, you're able to purchase any one of our CDs as well as merchandise. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, our, our music is, is very accessible. So anywhere that you type in the Shaylin Band, you'll see this face and you're able to get what you need. The weather is always amazing down this way. Um, we're honored, you know, to be a yeah. part of something so amazing. Um, Paul does an amazing job throwing these events and, 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 mm -hmm. and man, just to be here and just to be in the number means a lot. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Oh, the live audience. That is uh, the most exciting part of this entire venture It's being able to connect to people and let them feel and understand the music that you've written, that you've chosen. Uh, just building relationship, building bonds, fan base. Uh, I love to call them supporters more than fans because without them, you know, we really wouldn't have a band to really promote. So um, it's, it's phenomenal. I love to see the smiling faces. I love to see the kids and everyone getting up dancing. I love the reactions to a lot of the different things that we do. It's just, it's really fun. And we're a family-based band. So we like to bring the audience into the family with every performance. We have Memphis Lightning here today. That's yeah. going to be, yep. that's, that's going to be a ball of energy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's stacked. I mean, even if you go back to last night, you know, Eliza Neal, I mean, it was, he keeps amazing artists. So, I mean, whether you're kicking it off or ending yeah. the night, you know, you're in for a treat. It's one of the greatest things that you could support. Music is very moving, it's very touching, and it's uniting. So to be able to support artists that are putting their heart and soul into music that will bring the world together and people together, it's something that you would want to be a part of, something you want to help build up. And as we love to say, we need to keep the blues alive. <laughs> We have one song uh, called Peace, P-E-A-C-E. -E. It is uh, a song that we wrote about making sure that we maintain our peace, not letting anyone distract you from what you have going on and staying focused and uh, just basically staying encouraged. Why must I explain? Why do you have to know? Just give me a moment before frustration grows. And I don't know how to express my feelings. No, I can't talk. Silence is how I feel.
explaining this to you. Let me gain my composure. Come on, this ain't nothing new. And I still don't know how to express my feeling. I still won't talk. Silence is how I feel it. or frustrated or have people bring drama to you? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, I'm in the right crowd. Awesome. This next song is called P-E-A-C-E. -E. Let's go, band. your stress. I had no problem working through all your mess. But that time's gone and we gotta mature. I won't give in to the drama. Lord knows that's for sure.
never be alone Than a victim of love Imprisoned in my own home I know they say That love is blind Well my love's got glasses Cause we ain't got the time Cause now I'm old and truth be told I pay my dues For my solitude Lightning from the band Memphis Lightning. We're so proud to be here at the Bradenton Blues Festival today. So I've been very blessed. I've been playing since the age of eight, and I've been able to be touring and recording with the same band for 14 years. And uh, we've been playing national, national, and international for the last five years. Well, the thing is about me, my my old man who's in the band, Grammy-nominated musician Big Red, used to tour for many years with a blues legend by the name of Eddie Bluesman Kirkland. And he was blessed to play with some of the best. Pine Top Perkins, Lazy Lester, Tab and Juan, many more. And the thing is, I've had my own battle with health problems throughout the years. I'm actually, I'm six years cancer free this year. And the thing is, the blues alongside with rock and roll was always there for me. If I ever felt bad, I could listen to it and it would raise my spirits. And I always kind of felt like an old soul because a lot of the things I listened to are from the 50s and the 60s, not a lot of modern. So pretty much 80% of the music is all original. And I am the primary songwriter of the band. My old man will help me do some stuff because I love riffing with everyone in the band. And any of the covers we do, I try to select something that's gonna resonate with my audience. Because I'm one of those people that I want to play for everybody. I want to be inclusive because if it wasn't for the people, I couldn't do what I do. And the fact that people come out to see us play, I want to play music that I think they'll be able to relate to. The thing is, we tour all over. We play in the States. We play out of the country. We'll play. We got a tour coming up to England, Ireland, and Scotland. But when we do tour the States, we're, we'll do the 95 tour. We'll go to Maine and back. We'll go out to California, we'll do I-10, we'll go into Memphis, Nashville. We Pretty much wherever we can bring our music to the people, we'll do it. This is the first time at the Bradenton Blues Festival. And I absolutely love festivals because you get a chance to see all the different bands, all your friends, and you get to make many new ones. Like you're looking out today, you see all walks of life. It doesn't matter 
what people believe in in general. But you know what we do believe in is the power of music and love and it brings everyone together. It's the greatest feeling in the world. If it isn't for all the people putting all the work in and all the hard work, we wouldn't be able to do these. They wouldn't be able to bring in all the bands, all the vendors. And it's so nice to see everybody come together. And I strongly encourage anyone that can to always promote, promote, promote. Our show is rather energetic. We tend to have, even though we play some roots, we play some blues, our show is much more high energy and rock and roll. So I feed off the crowd and I love giving it to them. So it's gonna be a great day. Who's ready? <laughs> Let's have some fun.
Easy right here. Thank you so much. See, I've been everywhere, but me for coming here to play it means the whole world to me because I never played here before, and I, I'm really uh, excited about being here to play some blues down here for Florida. You know, it's it, it's been a time, but. I'm back, I'm here to play it. So I had a dream I played in this band when I was 14 years old down in Mississippi. So 1979, I started playing uh, with Willie Dixon. And I went to Mexico City, Muddy Waters, Coco Taylor, all those, Big Bill Bruiser, Larry Davis, all of them was on that show. And so after I played with Willie, then Muddy heard me and he asked Muddy, he asked, Muddy asked Willie, say, who the young man playing that guitar? He said, oh, that's John Primer. He works down at Teresa's uh, uh, lounge with Junior Wells and all of them. He said, oh, that man know my music. So when 1980 came and the old, the old man quit, he had called Willie and asked Willie about me, and Willie told him where was I at. And he sent the uh, harmonica player with George Mojo Buford down to Teresa to get me. Bro, Murray sent me down here to ask you, did you want to play in this band? He heard you over in Mexico, and he said, you know, it's music. I said, yeah, I jumped for joy. My dream came true. Taking off then when I got with Murder, then it started moving forward. It, it took off, but, you know, slowly, slowly, slowly. It's just like climbing a ladder, you know. So I had to climb the ladder, and I never quit doing what I'm doing. I love to play blues, and I would never change the style of all of the music, of all music that's been played, rock and roll, disco, soul music, doo-wop, I never change the style of it, but I always try to keep it exactly like it was played so the young generation can know what all this music has come from. I'm strictly a blues guy, but I'm, I play all music, soul music, blues music. I play all, I, I tell everybody I'm a blues band, but I play music. It never surprised what I play, but whatever I play is going to sound close to the original. So, so I try to play a little bit of everything so people can understand where I'm coming from, where the music come from. I play this all around the world, every place and more, and it's great to uh, see people coming out and support the blues, and it's wonderful things, and I hope it keep going forever. Long as, long as they have these blues fests, and the people keep coming to the blues fest and support the blues, it's very uh, important for me. I'm looking forward to see all the musicians that play. Looking forward to them. I'm looking forward to see them all play, man. Cause you know I'm not black. Cause I, I I I I support all musicians, so I'm looking forward to all of them, and I'm sure they all are great. You know I know they are. Well, you know I like to I like to tell the people to uh, 
just continue on uh, playing the blues and, and the people keep on supporting the blues and the blues society keep on doing the music. Those, those are the people that are really keeping the blues going, the blues society. So I hope, Brandon, don't, don't forget about what's going on here and keep it going for it for the whole whole community and, uh, and people's come from all over the world to check it out so it's, it's a good thing to keep doing i got a hard time hard time music that's the kind of music i play so i i present a cd that i got a new cd out called hard time and a tribute to magic slim which is nominated for grammy so i'm gonna that song is presenting hard time from from now and, and before the pandemic hammer and way back when I was a kid, it was a hard time. So this song it represents hard time of the music. Yeah. You know, I be trying so hard. I, I never give up. Even if I win or don't win, I don't give up. I just keep going. Like I said, I keep on climbing that ladder. I'm going to keep on climbing and I hope I make it to the top. So I'm almost there. So I'm going to keep going. So it's very, very important to me to be nominated, to win, to be nominated for all the awards that I won. This weather is so nice down here. It's nice and uh, it's a good place for, for uh, music to be done because you can do it all year long. But like where I come from, I live. I'm born in Mississippi, but I live in Chicago. We can't do it. We can do it if we do it. Be inside, not outside. But out here, it's very great to be doing this, and and I hope they keep doing it. Yeah. Hello, I'm John Farmer. Hello, Branton. I'm, I'm so proud to be here to, uh, to support the blues and to play some blues for you guys. And I hope I come back again. And uh, and I hope you all will enjoy the whole festival, not just me, but everyone that is performing for you and all the, the people that volunteer to, to participate in this blues. So keep the blues alive. I love you guys. And this goes out to the whole world. Love you all and keep on supporting the blue. Thank you so much.
up this morning with a baby on my mind. Yes, I woke up this morning with my baby on my mind. I got to find my baby cause she's a thousand miles away. I'm going to jump in my car, going to go on the floor so my way.
Yes, I woke up this morning with my baby on my mind. Yes, I woke up this morning with my baby on my mind. I got to find my baby because he was a thousand miles away. Dry, dry, dry. We just had an electric performance by you, Mr. Bell. Thank you so much for coming to Bradenton. And this is your first time here. First time here at this Bradenton festival. Blues Festival. My first time here at this festival. I've been to Florida, but not this festival before. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see you. Hey, hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, I see that you have a couple medallions hanging around your neck. Well, I won a, uh, a Grammy nominee for the BMAs out in California and one in Memphis, Tennessee. That's quite an accomplishment. Thank you so much. Yes. So what inspired your music career? Well, I started out when I was a youngster. I learned from uh, people like my father and uh, uh, some of his band members. And uh, I started around five, six, seven, eight years old, and I self-taught myself, and I've been doing it ever since. I've been listening, listening to my father, Mr. Kerry Bell Harrington. What a gift to be able to play from here. For well, sure. well, I just, you know, I wanted to do something. I didn't want to go outside and do what other people would do. So I started playing and playing my music the best way I knew how, and I kept it up. Your encore song, you talked about a gypsy woman. Yeah. Well, it's a song uh, uh, by, by, by Mother Waters. And I, you know, it caught my ear automatically, you know. And uh, uh, I learned how to play the Hoochie Coochie Man, and I kept doing it. And I love to do it. Yeah. The crowd I, seems to enjoy it too. What What is a gypsy woman to you? A gypsy woman is a lady that inspires you on how to uh, give you advice on uh, um, certain things when it comes down to your surroundings and environment. Where would you like to see your career go from here? I would like to see my career go uh, uh, forward. <laughs> <laughs> So you're currently on tour. How many days out of the year are you on tour? I play all the time. Every day? Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I got a song I did called 24 Hour Blues. <laughs> <laughs> That's your career? Yeah. <laughs> well, what a, well, what a wonderful thing to, to have such a passion that you get to do it every day and make all these people happy and dance and feel so touched by your music. It's a pleasant feeling for me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Very much, well. Y'all ready? Shake, rally, roll, key of eight. Up to one, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> Wash your face and hands. Get out of that bed and wash your face and hands. But get in that kitchen and clean those pots and pans. Like one eyed cat just peeping through the seafood stove. Like a one eyed cat always peeping through the seafood stove. But I can tell, look, girl, that you ain't no child no more. Stone. Just like a Mississippi bullfrog sitting on a hollow stone. But I could tell little girl that you need to run the long time. All 
gonna roll the hill before the sun comes shining through. The way you wear those dresses, the sun comes shining through. Well, I can tell, little girl, that your heart really belongs to you. You ought to shake, ride and roll. Come on and shake, ride and roll. Oh, you better shake, ride and roll. You gotta shake, honey, ride and roll. Yeah, you won't do nothing just to say your dog won't so.
train coming on round the bend. Train, train coming on round the bend. Well, you know that long train, it done did it again. All about. Sixteen bus cars and thirty-six hobos. Louis bears the throttle. He's a flying son of a bitch. Mississippi! You just got off the stage. You had an amazing performance with your band. How are you feeling? I feel fine. I'm kind of humid. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of our thing. Uh, and we're right by the river. That's true. So, and you got to look straight. Yeah, it was cloudy, partially cloudy today. Right. So tell me a little bit about your band because it's a tribute band. It's a, it's a tribute band in the sense that it's the old James Cotton band. So it's not a tribute band in the sense it's a bunch of guys that never played. They all played with him. And so that makes it a real special thing because it is his former band. And then um, the deal was James Cotton was the very first guy I ever saw, Chicago blues guy I ever saw when I was like 16 years old. So it was like, he was a guy I had an album by, learned everything off the album. I went and met him and he was so nice to me for a little bratty kid. It was asking him really stupid questions, but he was just wonderful, very patient. He obviously continues to inspire you today. And I was fortunate enough to do like, um, I hired him like four different times, I think, for different tours. So I did a total of about five tours with him over, um, from 2001 through like 2015, I think, or something like that. Very cool. And you were just telling me a little bit about your band and how you're pretty new playing together. Well, the deal is me and Steve Freund, the guitar player over by my side, the drummer, June Kaur, the three of us have been playing together for many years. But the other two guys, I only played like two gigs with them last year and then this is the second gig of this year so but but the thing is every because we all played with the same guy we all know the songs 
And you know the cues and the rhythm and the everything. And it's just kind of people know their jobs and people know how to sync together. And that's really that's really what makes music so much fun. Yeah, really getting the jive together. Everything to lock in. And, and, you know, when you got good enough players, it's a real easy thing to do. What does 2024 look like for Mark and the rest of the band? Well, I mean, we got a tour in California at the end of July with this band. I've got uh, a tour and uh, I've got a big harmonica show that I, that's what I hired James on. My harmonica shows have been going for 32 years. And so um, I'm doing that in February. That's about a 12 day, 14 day tour. And then um, in April, I'm doing a Southern tour from the West Coast to the East Coast. And then in uh, June, I think I might have some stuff. I'm not sure, I, you know, um, I mean, it's everything. On and on and on. That's great. I got like a couple really good festivals so far. I got that thing called the Rhythm and Blues Cruise, legendary Rhythm and Blues Cruise. That's in October. So I got a number of things that I'm working on. Cool. If I wanted to check out your calendar of events, where would I go? You go to markhummel.com. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Hummel. <laughs> Down the roses, stop with Fanny Man. Tell Fanny what a hug. Oh, Fanny said, Don't you stop me to talk it. I tell everything I know. I'm gonna break up this signifying, cause somebody's got to go. Jack, give us our two dollars, but I count and get some more. Gets out on the street, oh joy stops and knocked her down and blackened her eye. She gets back on with a husband alive. Don't just start me to talking. I tell everything I know. I'm gonna bring up this certain fine, cause somebody's got to go. Now, now take me daddy around the block Go 
on to the beauty shop where I can get my hair tied. Don't you start me to talking. I told everything I know. I'm gonna break up this single fine. Cause somebody's got to go. Thank you.
the light come and cry too. And the only Rick Astrin. How are you doing today? I'm fine. I'm good. We've, we've been having a good time in Florida. We've been here for, uh, I don't know, three three gigs so far. We got tonight and tomorrow night, and then we're going back to California. Well, we are so happy to have you here in Bradenton. Oh, I know this crowd has been waiting for you all oh, day. They've had plenty of good stuff to listen to all day. Oh. So. That, so, so this is kind of the best seat in the house. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have fun. <laughs> well, we'll, it's going to be fun. We're looking forward to it, man. We, we, we haven't been in Florida in several years, so. Well, that's that's yeah. what I heard. That yeah. everyone's really hyped up yeah. because they, you came to us, right, in Florida. Yeah, man. So tell me about going on tour. How many days of the year are you and your band on tour? Post pandemic, we probably tour maybe a hundred days a year. We're not we're not really. You know, back in the day, <laughs> we used to tour about 300 days a year. But, but yeah. uh, you know, now we have we're just more selective because it's it's difficult to uh, connect the dots like sure. we used to. You know, yeah. so, so we just we have a different business plan where we just fly everywhere. Sure, makes it a little easier that way. It is easier, <laughs> yeah. And it's, Rather than the bus life. Yeah, it's easier. <laughs> it is easier, and well. But, but the thing about it is the band is so killer right now so we have so much fun together that I wish we, we were... I oh, really yeah, wish the we camaraderie more that comes yeah. with it. Yes, yes. Well, and it's, maybe uh, hanging out in the hotel lobby just isn't the same, right? Um, well, <laughs> no, I mean, but then we'll go home. Then we each go home. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. So it's not really life life living together per se. Well, hang on out. I mean, we enjoy our time traveling between gigs. We enjoy our time in airport lounges. We just have a good time yeah. together, you know. So I miss these guts, my family. Yeah. You know? Well, we are so excited. You've been uh, you've won many many awards in the blues community. Yeah. Uh, highly regarded as one of the best in the industry for well, sure. Well, all I know, we have fun, and <laughs> and, it, and it was a perfect. Everything just turned out great for me, man. Because I you got, keep getting the invitations I got, to I play. I have no skills and no education, so this is perfect for me. <laughs> well, you have a God-given talent, that is uh, for sure. Uh, thank you. Absolutely. Where would you like to see your band end up next year? I just want to see us working. Just yeah. you know, we don't care where we go. Uh, we we like we we enjoy going to new places. But we enjoy going back to the same places too. So we just we just want to keep working and keep going because we, you'll see <laughs> when, when we get up. We just have so much fun that together that. Well, that I can't wait to a, see you perform. I'm really excited. This this would be a first for me. Tell me a little bit about your group, your your band, um, and the different instruments everybody plays to make your your sound so unique. Um, well, my songs are, if they're unique, it's pr pretty much just probably because I'm a semi-peculiar person, <laughs> so people say I'm quirky or something, you know, but, but, uh, 
we, uh, you know, w w w actually, Kid is the one, our guitar player, he's the one that usually makes a set list. Okay. But the songs are all, you know, mostly 90% our own songs. Yeah. And, and they're, some of them are from records we made years ago, and so a lot of them are from our last record, and some are, you know, in between, and, you know, it's just what seems to work within the flow of, yeah. of, the, of the show. So playing festivals like this, how is it important to keep blues music alive through these types of shows and festivals? I, I think there's, there's, there's bound to be more, obviously more young people at a festival than at a club. Yeah. Um, festivals are important to keep this music alive because a band like us, we need a festival because festivals pay better than a, than a club, club date. So we need a festival, we call it an anchor date. Yeah. We need something, either that or a private event or something, and then we build around it with some club dates. I love so that. So with the way the, uh, the economy is today in, the, in, in the, our level of entertainment, which is kind of low, uh, that's the only way we can make it work, you know? Yeah. So, so festivals are important in that way, and festivals are important because a young person can get in. The thing I will say about young people playing music is playing blues. I am more encouraged now than I've ever been because there are so many young guys and, and uh, um, in particular young black guys that are playing this music and really... Um, digging down, digging back in their cultural history and really just phenomenal musicians. And we were just on the um, the uh, legendary Rhythm and Blues cruise and there were so many of these young younger people on there than more than I've ever seen. Yeah. So it was it was great. That's why it's so important to keep music in schools and keep funding for music in Absolutely. schools. Absolutely. So it continues on to the next generation. Absolutely. And keeps the music live.
Chris, it is very nice to meet you. This is a first for me. Um, I've never done an interpreted interview before. I had a chance to speak with your dad and had a wonderful conversation with him. Tell me a little bit about you. Well, I was born deaf, so growing up, I worked closely with my grandma. And I actually finally met my dad six years ago for the very first time in my life, and we connected right away, and we've been so close ever since. It's an exciting time in our lives. I connected with my birth mom at 27. <laughs> you know, I connected with my father at the age of 49. It's a, a surreal moment. Indeed, it, it is. I feel that the final piece of the puzzle has been found. It's complete and it's, I'm just thrilled by the experience and I'm just amazed and in awe of the amazing family that I'm from. My father, my two aunts, his sisters. It's just been an amazing journey ever since. I can um, completely relate to those emotions that the, the cup was only filled when I got to meet the people that I never knew in my life, for sure. Yes, definitely. So through music, are you able to bond? Actually, no. I'm learning. You know, I never grew up listening to music because I am deaf. But ever since I met my father, I just began learning, you know, one of his songs. I saw one of his videos. And as I was watching him perform, he was sharing the lyrics with me as well. And upon reading them, I was able to really understand it's a form of poetry per se. And so now I'm really right now. starting to appreciate <laughs> music. I really appreciate music now because of my father and him taking the time to really share music with me. Wow, I am that's, learning. That's absolutely incredible. For a multitude of reasons, um, you know, learning music from your dad who you're just learning to build a relationship is one thing. And then seeing him as such a highly respected musician in the blues community layered on top of that. Yeah. Oh, I, <laughs> I, I've learned that as well, because the first time we met, I learned a lot about him. And again, I was just, I was shocked because we are similar in so many ways, my father and I are. And then performing in front of the public, he's very comfortable, obviously, as a musician, but I am as well. I'm an advocate for the deaf community, not just in one state, but for our entire country. And so I also am a spokesperson to the public, and I see that we share that. I love that. I love that individually for you and him and for your relationship that he's learning about you and what life is like through somebody who can't hear music and kind of learning how to um, feel the emotions of music. Yes, and you know, it's intriguing because when we first met, I asked if he had ever had a sign language interpreter and if he would have one for the blues festival. And, you know, I think it's new in the blues industry. It, it, it's, you know, it's different having an ASL interpreter, which is not very common. Mm -hmm. But being open to that whole idea for providing interpreters for the Blues Festival so that not only I can yeah. access, but my friends as well, yeah. we can all participate and really enjoy the show. I've seen, um, I think it was Lizzo, she had an interpreter at her concert, and the interpreter knew all the lyrics by heart and was so emotional in her presentation. It was inspiring to see... Um, somebody sign emotions really because I knew the lyrics but I didn't know the signs and then I I was learning while I was watching so that's definitely um, you know a way another way that people can connect through music through emotions through hand gestures and through a different um, subset community
Yes, and I think it's really important to acknowledge the fact that there are certain interpreters that are qualified to interpret music into American Sign Language. And so that is critical for not just me, but for any patron. And we have two very qualified interpreters here. I'm looking forward to the experience. Well, I hope uh, ASL interpretation is more widespread because I think it's a beautiful way to connect. Yeah, it should be more common. <laughs> Not not oh, just I for agree. news presses, but you know, for television in general. Definitely. Well, it was a pleasure Definitely. to meet you. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet. Nice, nice to meet. You. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Did you come to have a good time today? Well, let me let you in on a little bit of secret. So did we! We done all right? Huh? So far it's okay, everything okay? That's a real question. It's all right? Cool, cause we like, like, like Demar said, we we came here to have a good time. That's right. We didn't come here to play. We came here to play music. Ah! That's right. And we're so happy to be here because we haven't been in Florida in about like I don't know how long, maybe seven years. Yeah, it's been, been, a, been a long time, man. We've been wanting to get down here, wanting to get down here. Finally, finally, Paul, Paul made it possible. Paul Benjamin. That's right. Paul Benjamin. We're so happy to be here, because just a couple years ago, man, it was rough. Went locked up in the house. Didn't know if I'd ever do a gig again. And that was, you know, hey. I never cultivated any hobbies, so I was, you know, kind of lost at home. It was cool. The novelty of it was cool for about the first, you know, few months, and then pretty soon, I got a little, you know, I'll be honest, I got a little bit lonesome, because I, I lived by myself, you know? And uh, so I was thinking, shit, man, you know, I got, I, I ain't got no gigs. I, I ain't got that many more good years left, you know. I want, I need some company. And, and I can remember, man, the first time I went out the house, went to the store, scared to death, put on like two masks, put on some surgical gloves, bought all my little items in the store, got back out in the parking lot, and I was like, Phew, wow. And then, I saw this lady getting out of her car, and she was walking across the parking lot, and there was something about the way she was walking. I was like, damn. There was something familiar about it, you know? And I was like, man, I think I know her. And then, and then, then pretty soon I was like, shit, I do know her. <laughs> yeah. And, and, so as she was coming closer and closer, I was checking her out and, 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 and she had kind of, you know, pandemic and everything, you know how people got on the turn, locked up in the house and stuff. So she had, um, she had filled out, you know, considerably, you know, but, but what she didn't know, you know, the thing about it was, she looked great to me, man, because, yeah, yeah man, because, because, you know, she just looked, oh, she looked great, man. She got a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Then suddenly, she saw me. She recognized me, even with that mask on, she recognized me, took a sharp left turn, and went headed for the other entrance to the store. And I was like, what I do? what I do? Yeah. But she didn't understand. I could tell what it was, and I regrouped right quick. I ran over there because... Like I said, she had put on a, you know, she had filled out, and, uh, you know, 
She was looking good, man, because she had some, she had some great big, big old food. I was like, <laughs> so I had to run over there and tell her about it. Good on you. You got a new shape, baby. Show sure looks good on you. Ooh, I like it just like that. I tell the whole round world I do. Just take a look at you, girl. I guess it's been a while. I just a sally girl. It's so making me smile. You got more to hug. And ever before, hey, whatever you done, you need to do it some more. You got a new shape, baby. Show sure looks good on you. Ooh, I like it just like that. I tell the whole crime world I do. Oh, come on, kid. Let me hear you, baby. Come on, honey, this is me, now come on. 
I, I got a half gallon of Hagen Dots. <laughs> come on, honey, come on. Oh, you, oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, we're gonna have a good time tonight. Hey, that right, Derek? Oh, yeah, that's right, Rick. Uh, Brandon, did y'all come to have a good time this evening? Now, I didn't hear nobody but the people right down front. And let me, let me learn you something, as they say. Before I let Rick Estrin go all the way on you, I gotta make sure you're ready for him. Now, I know you've been, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, that's what I'm talking about. Now, I, I know you've been sitting out here all day, but I, I know you're not tired. You just spend all day getting ready for us, ain't that it? So if you came to have a good time, let me hear you say yeah. I'm talking about the people in the middle, in the back too now. I need everybody to participate in the left, in the right, in the front, in the back, from the bottom to the top now. Everybody, let me hear you, let me hear you say yeah. Say yeah. Say oh yeah. Thank you. 
may go to the devil Or I might just rot you in the ground Nobody knows Oh, I may go to the devil Or I might just rot you in the ground Event is over. Oh, you can just burn this sucker down. Y'all give it up for Rick Astor now. for the 2023 Bradenton Blues Festival. Special shout out to all the musicians and artists who performed today, this amazing lineup. The energy is still popping and a special shout out to Paul for making all of this happen in our community. I'm Stephanie Greppling with METV.